Welcome to Episode 31 of the Painting Experience Podcast. Listen as founder Stuart Cubley explores the potential of the emerging field of process arts and shares inspiration from his ongoing workshops and retreats. It's natural for us to get attached to what's happening in our painting, whether we like it or not. This episode looks at our tendency to fixate on ideas about what's happening rather than allowing ourselves to freely experience creativity in the moment. Some of the deepest revelations that we have in process painting have to do with the nature of self-identification, the ways in which we become attached to the content of the painting and identify ourselves with it. For example, we may start off with a certain color and texture on a new painting, and we find ourselves liking it. I really like the way that texture is showing up, and there's something about those brush strokes. And I take another color, and I find that I can do it with another color, the same brush stroke. There's a delight. And this is a very innocent and natural experience to have in the painting process. But something starts to take form underneath. We find ourselves beginning to be attached to that particular texture and the way the brushes are moving, and we start to form a plan. And this all happens unconsciously. We don't even see it. These tendencies of the mind to take over the experience. And we find ourselves making a plan, and we're going to maintain that texture in this painting. This is going to be a painting that has that texture throughout. It's going to change a little here and there, and the colors are going to meld with each other. And I find myself creating a form that I get attached to, to an idea that hasn't even fully manifested yet, and yet I'm really attached to it. I want it to be that way. I begin to mold my experience around that idea around that projection. And more so, I begin to mold my sense of myself around that projection. And this is something, it's not so easily recognized. We don't see how the very stance that we take in the painting process, the very stance that we take about projecting into the future creates a sense of self. And we're threatened if it doesn't happen. And in doing so, we diminish greatly the freedom that's possible in the moment, of course, because the serendipity no longer has a place. That which comes through the intuition and isn't at all concerned with whether that texture maintains itself and continues, there's no room for that anymore. There's no space. And so we find our freedom beginning to be constricted. Every stance that we take There's a sense of self that then becomes smaller. There's a solidification of self, you might say. What's interesting is that this happens even with paintings that we don't like. And sometimes we start a painting and we really are appalled or at least disturbed by what's happening. And we begin to take a different quality of stance towards that painting. It's more of an adversarial stance. And we find ourselves becoming obsessed with that which we don't like. And we're going to fix it. And we're going to make it better. And the more we try to make it better, and the more we try to fix it, the worse it gets. And the more obsessed we get, the stance begins to solidify itself. Now formed around not liking the painting. (laughs) And what I found is really interesting is that when someone creates that stance of not liking the painting... They become attached to that. They don't want that to change. They don't want to do something that would entirely move them into a new relationship to the painting in which they could care less about whether they like that particular area or not. No, they want to stay with that stuckness. That's become who they are. That's become the sense of self, whether it's positive or negative. We'd rather keep that because it's familiar in some way than dare to enter into a new sphere in which we had to let go. Now, we also do this in relationship to having a narrative and a story and an interpretation around the painting. 
the mind again creates an idea. Oh, I see. This is what I'm doing here. This side of the painting is the freedom and the potential of my future. And I can see all these light colors there. And I'm going to make sure that that side of the painting is going to reflect that potential. And on the left side here, there's going to be darker colors and I can have a storm cloud and I can have disturbing qualities because that's where I'm moving from. And we create this whole narrative. And then, of course, we get attached to that narrative. And there's no room for something that would break the narrative. And again, our freedom begins to become diminished. And we find ourselves getting stuck in this sense of self. And we don't want to let go. This is what's reflected to us through the creative process. This is both the invitation and the challenge, which is to go beyond ourselves, to meet that tendency by which we form a sense of self and create that illusion and then are stuck in that illusion. And these tendencies are very deeply unconscious. We don't even realize a lot that we're doing them We only experience them through the results that they manifest. And in process painting, we experience them through this lack of freedom, this getting stuck. And so each time we're faced with that, we're presented with the opportunity of letting go, of going beyond that structure, with going beyond the stance that we've taken. And part of us freaks out. There's a flare-up. There's a tendency to abandon, to give up to not go there, to not let go. It's too much. And, of course, we're going to do this. We do abandon ourselves over and over again, and we do live to have another day. But it's going to be a day without dimension. It's going to be a day without the taste of transcendence. And this is the potential of the creative process, is that it really allows, in a very immediate way, the experience of transcendence, the experience of no self. From the outside, you know, it might not look like much. I mean, it's just a new stroke on the paper, and it's just a new color, a new image, but inwardly it's momentous. To go beyond yourself is letting go of everything that you know and everything that you can stand on and not have a guarantee and not know where it's going to take you what in Zen they might call ordinary mind, natural mind. It may seem like no big deal, but there's a quality there of not being defined, of not having a sense of self in relationship to the form that's now in front of you. So this is the beauty and the agony of the creative process and the potential that exists within self-expression to find a relationship with the mystery and with the unknown that's deeply, deeply satisfying. And I must say, it often makes life somewhat harder because given that experience of freedom, you know it. You've experienced it. It's in your bones. And when these tendencies show up, which they will, after a while, the tendrils of these tendencies reassert themselves and start to grasp and form and new self-definitions and stances take place and we find ourselves more uncomfortable than even before because we've known the freedom and we become allergic now to this diminished space and sense of ourselves and we don't stand it. And so life becomes more challenging in a certain way and yet at the same time more vital and more alive and more real. You can learn more about the painting experience and find a list of upcoming process painting workshops by visiting our website at www.processarts.com. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share it with a friend. The theme music for this podcast comes from Stefan Jacob. We thank you for listening and hope you'll join us again soon.